What's up guys? Welcome to today's video on free to play enemy showcase. Originally, I didn't plan to pull her and make this video since she's a bit too restrictive to my liking, and Nana is coming out very soon. But after reading through some information on them, well, let's just say I have more hopes for Emily than them. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into the showcase. Same as usual, let's start with her build first. C0 Emily with R5 Mystic Wind Spear. Yes, unfortunately, that's already the best free to play 4 star weapon for her. And I must admit, her crit rate is way lower than I would like it to be. But it can't really be helped since her ascension isn't crit rate, and there's no free to play crit rate pull arm available except for the 3 star White Tyson, which is really bad on her. So, unless you pay for her signature or battle pass, you will start with the low crit rate. Well, anyway, here's my artifacts for her. Not the best in the world, but you do for this showcase. Now, if you don't want to find this burning set, your best alternative will be the Deep Wood Memories. At the same time, unless you are out of Ocean, I don't really recommend Golden Tooth set as it doesn't buff her burst and passive talent, which both are significant portion of her damage. Talent wise, I trust you already know the drill. Ignore the normal attack and upgrade the rest. A shame I couldn't upgrade it more since I didn't prepare enough materials beforehand. But nevertheless, let me show you her damage. Everyone knows she's bound with burning, so here's her solar damage with just the burning without any additional buff. Well, with this amount of damage, I think we can all agree that she's one of the best off field DPS right now in the game. Honestly, it's only fair for her to have this damage, considering burning is such a trash relation no one really likes. By the way, if you're combining burning with other relations such as Virgin and Overload, both her passive talent will become less effective since burning becomes unstable. The more duration you add, the more unstable it becomes, and the less damage you deal. Worst case scenario, some units like Sinchu will almost fully eliminate burning, essentially disables both her passive talent. In this footage, she can't even reach tier 2 lantern because there's zero burning on the field, so keep that in mind when you're building a team for her. Now before going into the team showcase, aren't you curious about her performance outside of burning? Well, at least I am. So for this experiment, since both the artifacts and her passives stop working without burning, I'm gonna use this ridiculously cracked golden tube set on her, just to see if there's any chance of her breaking the shackles of burning. So here it comes. Fresh and floral. Well, that's really, really pathetic. It's almost on par with Raiden's elemental skill. So guess what? Rest in peace, Sino. Now, after we saw her performance in various conditions, it's safe to say enemy is best for mono piloting where Bernie is 100% consistent. Obviously, that calls for Alekino and Lini. She's currently one of the best DPS in the game, so it's really fortunate for Emily to be able to work with her. At the same time, this might be one of the best team for Alekino too, since Emily is the strongest sub DPS right now. The only one who is able to beat this is Yelan, but it requires a lot of skills to handle the weapon as well. So on the hands of average people like me, Emily is definitely better. Anyway, not much else to talk about this team. It's just strong and simple. The birds call! I'm going in! Where do you think you're going? <laughs> Another very common team you'll see with Emily is the Burning Melt team, featuring either Ganyu or Will. She's basically a complete upgrade over Nahida, all thanks to her passive talent reducing the burning damage onto ourselves. So no more burning ourselves alive. Thank God. Besides, since Cryo doesn't react with Dendro, there's no risk of it intervening with Burning at all, making it a perfect team for Emily to join. Honestly, after all this time, 
this is one of the smoothest wire team I've played, so I strongly recommend all wire men to try this team. There's only one problem left, which is the circle impact, but I leave that to the future pilot icon. My way now. No need to fear. This is probably a surprise, but Emily can be a good driver for National 2. Well, sort of. It's a similar team, but was completely different with Emily. Unlike original National, Fuina is the one doing the red prize instead of Xiang Ling. Besides, without Team Y Healer, you have to keep switching characters to heal out for Fuina's buff, which is not exactly easy and convenient to play, so I don't think it's better than traditional National. But nevertheless, it's still a viable team choice for Emily. Reconstitute. I'm going in. A little ambiance. Time to shine. Eat this. I'm the fry pan into the fire. Right to storm. Everybody, stand back. Neutralize. Where do you think you're going? Let my name echo in song! Kaboba, get them! This will brighten up the place! You're toast! Now let me show you some of the fun things you can try. Isn't it funny for Burning Choli to work with Choli? Well, you might think it's nothing more of a mean team, but actually it turns out to be quite decent. All you have to do is to choose a pilot DPS such as Shomiya and spawn the normal attacks, leaving all the job to your creations. Meta-wise, it's hard to say whether it's better than Vampire's team, but it's definitely one of the easiest teams to play since no one in the team needs energy for burst. If you're a fan of Absolute Chaos, you'll definitely fall in love with this team. With 4 elements and 6 type of relations, your screen will be like fireworks where you won't really know how enemies die. But of course, since we added so many relations into the team, Emily will lose some part of the damage, but not to a point where her tier 2 lantern distinguish. Honestly, it's a surprise to see Emily's Dendor is actually enough for this team. On the other hand, Colleen is the only best choice for this team, as she's the only electro DPS who can heal herself, especially under Fuina's healing buff. A little ambience. Time to shine. I got you covered. Loaded. Don't get too close. T Let the world collide. <laughs> Here's Becca. Fresh and floral. Strike a pose. What evil looks shoot on sight into the shadows. Check this out. Kill support and fire. Now that we have reached the end of this video, let me share with you some of my thoughts about her. As a star DPS, she is basically perfect in almost every aspect. Just throw down the lantern and profit, simple and yet strong. However, the biggest problem with her is the limitation. She is completely 100% reliant on burning, so if you are out against enemies who can't be burned, she is basically dead, even more dead than Albedo. For your contest, she feels like a CC Falzan where everything about her is perfect, but it's completely exclusive for any more characters. As for now, there's only 4 characters who truly benefit from her. Alekilo, Lili, Ryo, and Gang Yu. All other team choices are more of a farm team instead of meta. 
So my recommendation is, choose a great pool if you main any of these characters. If not, I think it's best for you to wait for Lidoran, just to see whether she's compatible with Pyro Archon. Well anyway, that's basically my two cents. So what do you think about her? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Eternal oasis.